morning, we are headed on a bit of a journey out to Tikal. So we're taking the bus to Flores, and after we get to Flores, we are getting a van from Flores to Tikal. So it's gonna be a long day, probably won't get there till six or seven tonight. Oh, we need to start this morning with a lancha and then to the bus to Flores. So we'll see. Hopefully it'll go well. Just you and me this morning, baby. Yeah. So to Guatemala City, we take Litegua. That's the bus over there. To the north, this is Fuente del Norte. It's more interesting. This will be a very interesting cultural experience. Absolutely. Nice and quiet here on the main street. Oh, yeah. One of the things that is very common on this bus is to get stopped several times by the authorities because there are lots of Hondurans on the bus making their way north to the United States. It's really interesting. I've just met a gentleman named David who's from Honduras who's making his way north at this moment and I'm going to see if he wants to tell his story. Hello, this is my new friend David. Yeah. And David's from Honduras. Yeah, I'm from right. Honduras. And we are riding up north on the same bus together. David, where are you heading to? What's your final destination? My plan is to, to the bridge in the United States because this difficult situation in my country, Honduras. Yeah. The money crime, the yeah. money traffic drug, Man. the money gang. Therefore, I take this my decision yeah. to immigrate out there in my country. Thank you so much for telling your story, uh, okay. David, and we wish you all we wish you all the best. Who knows when this bus is going to get here? Yeah. One of these days. But the good thing is, it's nice and cool in here, and it's relatively quiet compared to all the chaos that's going on outside. Now the bus has arrived. It's about. 30 minutes late. The tickets to Tikal are 150 quetzales. We bought them here this morning. We were told to come early at 8 for a 9.30 bus to make sure we got tickets. I'm not sure if we needed to be here this early. Anyway, we've been waiting two hours now for the bus to arrive. It's here and hopefully we'll get seats on it. We're in the wild, wild west heading north. Yeah, so I think yeah. we're going to be stopped quite a bit. There's no air conditioning either, so it's all windows. The good thing is, is it's a cloudy day. So. Yeah, so it's not so hot. Yeah. So that's a good, exactly. good thing. Oh, we've already been boarded by the police here. It's 2.45 and we've just arrived in Flores. You in? Yeah. Okay, cross this. My ankle's bothering me, so we decided to hop in this little tuk-tuk. You wanna go out and buy one of these? Yeah, yeah. Nice and roomy. <laughs> We are now heading to a hotel on the island of Flores, the place where we will meet the van to get transported to the Jungle Lodge in Tikal. It's about an hour journey into the National Park. On our return trip, we are excited to spend two nights in Flores before heading back to the Rio. We gotta unfold our bodies and our luggage to get out. Oh yeah. <sighs> Gracias, senor. Gracias, senor. When you start this. Ah, so pretty. 
now we are going to grab a bite to eat before we get in the hour-long van to the jungle inn. I found a place, it just says tacos. There's no restaurant, it's just like a little stand. It's supposed to be really good. But look how cute this is. We are eating lunch at Tacos. A family and business. Mama, son, daughter, spouse. Look at this great food. Amazing. <laughs> Finally, after 12 hours of travel, we have arrived. <laughs> We're definitely in the jungle. So last night we got here at night and didn't get to see much because it was pouring rain. It's our first morning here in Tikal National Park. We're right in the middle of the jungle. I've already seen a coati. They aren't scared if they're related to raccoons, really, of humans. Yeah. Because of the weather forecast, we decided not to do the sunrise tour, but we do have a guided tour scheduled later this morning. But while it's still quiet and before the crowds arrive, we are gonna take a walk to the plaza to check it all out. We hear that the early morning hours are spectacular. The bark or roar that you are hearing is the call of the howler monkey, the loudest of all monkeys. They are also the laziest. As it turns out, a vegetarian diet is a low energy food source, making for a low energy monkey. So they make this bark or howl to announce their territory, averting any potential physical confrontation, depleting the little energy they this do have. This is the ceremonial area. 16 square kilometers. The archaeologists, they registered like uh, 4,000 structures, but only the 8% of the most important structures has been restored. The 92% is still covered by the forest. We are going to visit the most important monuments. The central Acropolis was the Royal Palace of Tikal. Then we are going to visit the North Acropolis, and you will have chance to climb Temple 2. Temple 2, Temple of the Mask is in front of Temple 1, Temple of the Great Jawor. It's the most important monument of Tikal. After the main plaza, we are going to visit Temple 3, Palace of the Windows, Complex N, and we are going to finish in Temple 4. Temple 4 is the tallest one. It's 70 meters tall. You can climb. The American people, they call Temple 4 the Star Wars view. 19 <laughs> seconds of Star Wars. Right. <laughs> We're filmed from the top of Temple 4. The civilization didn't disappear in 900, they just moved okay. and they restarted. But the problem is when you were growing gradually for 2,700 years, you are right to the maximum splendor and then you have a natural problem and you collapse. And when you move and you try to restart, you had the big problem with the vacant of power. All the small cities try to take the control of the commerce, of the territory, and they start fighting each other. Mm -hmm. And that was the, 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 the biggest problem because when the Spanish people arrived, they found divided people. Mm. And for them it was very easy to conquer. Yeah. When we think about <laughs> cactus 
we think about arid areas, you know, with only 300 or 400 millimeters of rain a year. But we have three different species of cactus living in the humidity. These cactus are epiphytes. They live on the trees and they eat only the humidity and the powder and the wind, like the orchids. In the rainy season, they build them up. In the dry season, they build them flat. Josh is like the first, the primordial tree, the life tree. And you know, most of the trees here in this area, they don't have the vertical root, only the lateral roots. This one has the longest root, vertical root, and is like 35, 40 meters tall. The tree is connecting the underworld with the root yeah. and the material world with the trunk mm. and the overworld with the branches. The Mayas, they divided the underworld in nine levels and the overworld in 13 levels. The underworld is divided in nine levels because we're in our mother's womb for nine moons in the dark, huh. in the water. Then we arrived here and we are going to live here for each time. Then we have to go back to the mother's womb. And she is going to deliver us to the way back to the origin. 13 levels. Why 13 levels? Because every 5,200 years, 13 times 400, the solar system is aligned with Orion and with the black hole of the Milky Way. And this tree was exploded before 1955. In uh, the beginning of the chewing gum industry it started 1898, Mr. Wrigley and Mr. Adams, they were the pioneers. Yeah. And with the First World War, the chewing gum became famous in all the world. The Second World War, more. In this region, for example, the people, they call the chewing gum the white gold. Wow. People from Mexico, the southeast of Guatemala, they came to work in the chewing gum industry here. Yeah. They were working seven months in the forest, you know, every day. Striking the, the, the latex, cooking the latex and making the pieces. Other people with 60, 70 mules, they were entering into the forest to take the product to the airfields. And the airplanes from the United States were coming just to take the, the product to the United States. In 1960, the German people, they sent decided the chewing gum and the market fell down. This is the market area. <laughs> Probably there were more markets, not because yeah. It's a city with uh, more or less 125,000 inhabitants. This is for thousands of people, but not for 100,000. Yeah. They, they had referential currency, the cacao beans. They knew the value mm. of the yeah. cacao beans, oh, yeah. and they bartered. They were a complementary society. The people living in the flat areas, they were growing corn, squashes, chili peppers, mm. uh, tuberous. People living in the hills, black beans, and other kind of products. We have a village in El Salvador, uh, Joya de Seren. Joya de Seren was covered by a volcano uh, eruption in 600 after Christ. The people, they escaped, but they lived everything, you know, in the grand stones, in the kitchen room. And now, when the archaeologists, they are removing the lava, they are finding all the evidences wow. about the commune, commune life. Are you feeling bad? What happened? Is it allergy? So one of the people in our group just got bit by something and his finger is swelling. So the guide is getting a leaf that is good to prevent swelling. Very good after bite. The importance of the place was not only for the commerce, for the social interaction, the information, the news. Now in that corner, there is a chuch. The chuch is uh, like a sauna. They went there to purify their body and their consciousness. And this is only for 20 people, but probably there were more chuchs in the area. Why they build this sacred place in a market? Because they took advantage of the people bartering to take them into the sacred yeah. places. When we live every day, Many times we commit a lot of mistakes, not intentional, but you commit mistakes. You offend people. Mm -hmm. And you need to go to the chuch 
to purify it, your salt, your cosmic salt. Uh, they go once a month. What probably in the ancient times was often. We have one bench there and the other one here. This is material from the roof. The small place there was the place for the hot stones. Okay. They hit the, the stones outside and they put it inside and they added water from outside to produce yeah. the vapor with aromatic plants. In all the rituals, the Mayas, they use alcohol. If you are meditating and you drink not too much, a glass of yeah. alcohol, <laughs> you go deeper mm. and you block your reason and you activate your mm. consciousness. 73 times 260, the moon calendar is 18,980 days. If you go 52 per 365, it's the same amount of days. What that means, every 52 years, there was a eclipse, sun eclipse, ah. because sun, moon, and earth were in the same ecliptical line. Hmm. Okay. And that was the expectation of life for one person. If you, were, if you went over 52, you became knowledge, vice man. They didn't retire the people, okay? You go in pension. No, you become conciliar because the, yeah. the old people, they can break a little bit the energy of the young people, you know, <laughs> to create the balance. <laughs> 38 palaces, more than 148 rooms. Because the Mayas, they didn't know the European arch. Right. They used the cantilever. And using the cantilever, uh, you can't go over two meters and a half of base. The spaces inside are small, okay. just to sleep. The daily life happened outside doors. These patios were covered by palm roofs. And we need to imagine all these palaces covered by stucco and painted with different colors. Was everybody related? Yes, the same, royal? the same family okay. The same family, yes, the royal family. Okay. They then the intellectual caste, they lived in the stone palaces around the plaza, okay. inside the 16 square kilometers. And the common people in palm and wood houses outside the stone city, in the periphery. How did you become an intellectual? Dynastic system. Uh, the, the only way to keep the knowledge okay. and the power right. is passing the knowledge from father to son. For that reason, they had castes. The government was dynastic. It's the same in the, in the, the common people. Uh, they were very proud to be little farmers because their grandparents, they were little farmers, their parents were, and they were little farmers. They gave uh, dignity to the different classes. Another important thing is they had not other civilizations living different. They had not the possibility to compare. Right. Because the problem is when you are eating tortillas, tortillas are very good. Yeah. But if you see somebody else eating bread, you say, ah, probably bread is better. <laughs> right. And you start to be unhappy yeah. because you don't have bread. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? They, they were very, very stable society. Mm -hmm. So could a commoner marry into the dynasty or never? No. Uh, this is a very important question because, okay, to keep the order, you need to respect the order. Then they use the hose to collect the rain water. They put ah. the clay in the bottom mm -hmm. and they use a reservoir. This is a bedroom. Oh, yeah. okay. bed. We need to imagine the mattress, a colorful mattress. They, they work with the cotton and the textiles. The walls were covered by stock and painted with different colors. There, there was another wall like this with another little window. Two little windows created the ventilation inside the room. And this is the cantilever chamber. Right. Or the so, Mayan arch. <laughs> so a very rich person's house right here. Yeah, yeah, part of the royal family. Right. Were these the tallest buildings in the world? In Egypt, Okay. the pyramids are taller, 105 meters, but a, a difference because they built the pyramids for the tombs and you, you can't climb up the pyramids. Okay. Here you can climb up okay. because uh, here they use the pyramids as sacred mountains to go up to worship God. This was a throne. Pero es eso. Pero esto, uno se pregunta, ¿por qué tan ancho? We ask. Why so uh -huh. white? Yeah. <laughs> because we imagine the king like this. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. the Maya rulers, they sit like. in the middle of the throne mm. in lotus shape.
But the intellectual people, they ate more proteins and they were taller than the common people. Ah. The tallest Maya found it until now, he was six feet. Because I was wondering the steps yeah. are really high. Okay, but this is, exagger this is an exaggeration because they were marking the difference. <laughs> the big uh, steps the is because we are different than uh -huh. you. Marking the, the status. Oh. Now for us it's very easy to cross this Acropolis because we are we are walking on top or inside the palaces, but in the past, mm. this was a labyrinth. Right. Very difficult to cross. Sure. Because oh. this was a private area. Do people have more than one wife? We have a little evidence about one wife, but not necessary one woman. Because if, if, if you want to keep, you know, the order, you need to have one wife. Mm. Because your first, your first son is going to be the next ruler. Right. But you can have more wives, like concubines. Yeah. yeah. Right. And, you know, to produce uh, writers, astronomers, mathematicians, you know. Warriors. Intellectual, yeah, intellectual people yeah. for the other castes. Right. Uh, this is the, the, the one I told you, but it probably was the place for the royal couple. Okay. The rooms are a little bit bigger. The palaces were two floors minimum. It is the only patio facing to the main plaza. Okay. Mm -hmm. We are going to enter to the main plaza through that passage. This is beautiful. It's one of the most important moments of the tour. <laughs> because, you know, the plaza is going to open in front of you. And you will have the idea about the really dimension and the really importance of this city. Mm -hmm. This was the royal palace for the royal family. Okay. The North Acropolis was the ceremonial place to worship, you know, the ancestors, because the, the complex was built on top of the royal cemetery. And the temple one and temple two, the positive sides of the universe, the sun, moon, day, night, man, woman. And uh, under the temple one was found the most important tomb of Tikal, the great ruler Hasao Kankawi, who built the plaza. He was buried under the temple. And he had 16 and a half pounds of jade and a lot of pottery, jewels made by coral mm. shells. To build that was a miracle. Mm. And this is still a stand up after 1,250 years. How much renovation had to be done? Was it very intact, just covered by? The structure was almost intact. Only the destruction of the facade, you know, because the roots, yeah. the roots destroyed the stucco, yeah, right. but the structural was intact. Okay, this is a good question, but we don't have answer. <laughs> because we don't know how many people they work. This was the common area, the Grand Plaza, mm -hmm. and that's where, where they we're at right worshipped. Now. These were temples, and they worshipped in the temples, and then they did all of the rituals for ceremony here, uh, which is happening on that hill over there. Anyway, it's been a great tour so far. Our tour guide is really good. Oh, he is really good. Really interesting, and time he to... and his family used to live on the grounds up until 1986 because they were responsible for cutting down the trees, keeping everything mowed, and also repairing these structures. What you have to understand is these structures for hundreds of years were covered by the jungle. And so his family and about 30 other families, so they didn't have to commute back and forth. So I guess they could spend more time working and with their family, they lived here until it became a UNESCO yeah, World, Heritage, World site. Heritage site, then they kicked them out. Yeah, they were told to relocate and they did. It was a substructure. Okay. A substructure. Yeah, okay. they, they built a the small temple with three masks. Chuck in the first platform, okay. Kinichahau in the second one, and Venus in the third one. The uh, best preserved is Chuck. Uh, then uh, Hasao Kankawil, he built another temple on top of the first one. <laughs> And that was like 23 meters tall. Okay. But when the archaeologists, they were working in the 60s, the superstructure fell down. When they were removing the, 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 the stones, they found the mask and some tombs. Temple 1, Temple 2, plus Temple 33, where the mask is. Yeah. That was the third stone. 
and the altar is in the middle of the, of the triangle, is this sacred fire. According to the experts, this tree is more or less 500 years old. Oh, wow. But, it, okay, the diet was based in corn and beans. This was the key. All protein. Yeah, yeah, the, the, the beans provide the proteins. Yeah. Then you can add squashes, tuberous, and chili pepper. This is the diet still now. As you can imagine the common women bringing the food for the intellectual people, for the royal family, three times a day. They felt very proud to have the opportunity to feed the royal people. Ah, those wow. are termites. Mm -hmm. Did you just eat that termite? Taste it? It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. No, what do they taste mm -hmm. like? Chicken? Like mint. Okay. Like mint? Not bad, yeah, like mint. Is the uh, acid, the formic acid? Sure, I'll try one. I've been talked into a lot of things, and uh, so I'm just going to come right down here and grab one of these things. Mint? Yeah. According to the architects, the Mayas, they used like uh, 190,000 cubic meters of stone to build this temple. From the different Mayan sites around Tikal. 30 kilometers from here, you can see Temple 4. Very probably they use smoke. Mm. Right. For signals uh, to communicate. Mm. I have the experience of Temple 5. It's 57 meters tall. It's more or less like this. And there, the staff was 40 people. And they worked for six years. And they spent 12 million of quetzales. We can calculate here, this is 70 meters. They can work 50 people per six years and spend 13, 13 and a half million of quetzales to, to restore this temple. Wow. All right, so this is temple four, the famous temple from Star Wars? Yes. Okay, you can bomb an area um, from a plane or from right. a drone. Yeah. And okay, that. you have laser. Right, right. And you have a lot of yellow points. And the yellow points represent limestone Stuff. hills or structures. Yeah. And you need to buy special antennas and you create like a Google map with all these points. And you go to confirm oh. if the yellow point is really a structure or not. Mm -hmm. Then you can bomb again this structure with the lasers yeah. and you use filters and the filters cut before the forest and then the soil and at the end you have a tridimensional image and you can know more or less how is the shape and the dimension of the structure. Oh. In all the cases they do that. Right. Oh, uh -huh. they don't uncover all of it. Uh, no, they choose the, the best part of it. part yeah. because they have more evidence to restore yeah okay. because you can't use more than the 25 percent of new material on the way back to the jungle lodge the guide showed us the remains of a camp used by the archaeologists exploring tikal it was adjacent to the village where he grew up when his father was working at the site while the wooden barracks had long been dismantled the abandoned vehicles and camp equipment are a reminder of all the work that was done to uncover this Mayan treasure. Oh, this is where my dad went to school. 